Really Skin Deep Beauty Vlogger here, I hope you're all really well. Today I've got a really exciting new video for you and that is Top 5s. I thought I'd do a series of these videos. Today I'm going to start off with my Top 5 Floral Fragrances, which I thought would be really lovely for spring, maybe if you're looking for a new scent. And these are all sort of classic florals and I've got a combination of really traditional ones up to newer launches. If you've watched my channel for a while then you may recall that fragrance is one of my favourite beauty areas. Some of you have requested fragrance collection videos or a sort of fragrance recommendations. So those of you that have requested that I hope that you'll enjoy this video. I've got quite a few ideas for top fives that I want to do in future but if you've got any special requests or ones that you want me to do sooner rather than later then just pop them in the bar below. I will say that it has taken me quite some time to gather together these top five. Not sort of because I didn't have them available. I have an embarrassingly large perfume collection, but because I really am taking this seriously, I've chosen my top five favorite florals. You know, I haven't just sort of grabbed the first five florals that came to mind. I'm taking it so seriously that I've actually taken notes and I'll be referring to them, which I never do in my videos. So if you feel that I'm reading, then that's why. Do bear with me. So let's get started. Now the first one is going to come as no surprise, and I couldn't do a top five florals without including this. It is of course Chanel number no. five, such an iconic fragrance. You know, you've got that famous Marilyn Monroe quote, it's a bestseller, the bottle is instantly recognisable. This is brand new, so do excuse the fact that I'm only showing you the box. You all know what the bottle looks like, I just don't really feel ready to open this just yet. I've got some other perfumes that I'm trying to finish up first. Now not everyone is going to like this, but I certainly feel that it's a fragrance that everybody should at least go up to a Chanel counter and smell it. If you don't feel comfortable going up to the Chanel counter itself, try it at Duty Free. Now this was launched all the way back in 1921, and I'm going to show you a really cool advertising image. This is how it was advertised in the 20s. I love this image, I think it's so cool, so chic. Incidentally, this is from one of my favourite books, The Essence of Perfume by Roger Dove, a must-have if you're into perfume as I am. So I thought I'd share that with you. I hope I'm allowed to show you that, I'm not too sure. Now this fragrance was designed in collaboration with Coco Chanel by the perfumer Ernest Beau. Now he was the last perfumer to the Russian court, which I think in itself is pretty cool. You know, you've got that really sort of opulent, excessive history behind this. Coco Chanel herself was pretty forward thinking. When this launched, she gave out the first few bottles as gifts to her clients. And I just think that's such forward thinking in terms of marketing. So I'm going to read through the various notes that are included in this fragrance. It's got a slight hint of violet along with Lily of the Valley, Rose de Mai, Jasmine from Grass, which is sort of the perfume capital. I went there a few years ago and loved it. Ylang Lang, which adds a really sort of sensual element to it. It's also got vetiver, sandalwood, musk and vanilla. The thing that really sets this apart from other florals and makes it so distinctive is the mix of aldehydes in with the florals. Definitely check it out, it's one of the most iconic fragrances and one that everyone should at least try. Next up is a newer fragrance and that is Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. This was launched in 2005 to mark the 10th anniversary of the design house. This is such a popular fragrance, it's very wearable and I think it makes a great gift if you're unsure of what to get somebody because it's very rare that someone doesn't like this. The reason for that is that it's got a lot of white florals in, which tend to make perfumes very popular and wearable. It's got top notes of bergamot and green tea, and then that heart of white florals. So we're talking jasmine, freesia, orchid, and rose. And then as it dries down, it's really powdery on the skin, and that makes it very feminine. It's also got musk and patchouli, but you know, ignore any sort of hippie connotations that patchouli may have for you, because it's very modern. It's not sort of hippie-like at all. Next up is the signature fragrance by Michael Kors, which apparently Kim Kardashian is a fan of. And if you smell this and then you smell her signature fragrance, there are definite similarities. This again is a white floral, but the predominant scent in this is tuberose, which is quite a sweet floral. I've worn this for years, and whenever I've worn it, people have asked me what I'm wearing. It's really distinctive, and I find that it lingers really well on the skin as well, although everybody's different. If you've got oily skin, then perfume may wear off a little quicker. In addition to that distinctive tuberose, it's also got freesia, peony, iris, and violet root. And then again, the base is very sensual. It it's got cashmere wood, which I love as an ingredient, very sensual and skin-like, as well as vetiver and musk. Next up is the newest launch of the ones that I'm going to be talking about today, and that is Valentina by Valentino. 
Firstly, can I just say how beautiful this bottle is? It almost reminds me of a Chanel bottle because of these sort of flowers and it's just something about it even though it's not square. This was launched in 2011 and again it's a white floral so it's very wearable. This was designed by two noses as they're known in the industry and they are Alberto Morelias, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and Olivier Cresp. Now he's very important in perfumery and whilst you may not recognise his name you will certainly know some of the fragrances that he's worked on. He's worked on a lot of popular scents. Despite this being a floral I actually find it quite fresh. It starts off with bergamot from Calabria and it's also got white truffles in it from Alba which I really like that it's got those sort of Italian ingredients it harks back to the heritage of Valentino as an Italian couture house. It's also got orange blossom from Amalfi, sweet jasmine, wild strawberries and again it's got tuberose but it's really not as distinctive as in the Michael Kors. The base is cedar, vanilla and amber which makes it really sensual but I still find this a fresh wearable fragrance. I would certainly wear this as an everyday fragrance as opposed to say for a night out. Last up and I meant to say that these are in no particular order. This is a slightly controversial one and this is Gerlat My Insulence. Again a really beautiful modern bottle. You probably can't see it but this base here is all really beautiful iridescent almost like a mother of pearl effect. Now I say controversial because this was launched in 2007 and people that like Guerlain, as I do, tend to have strong opinions and they don't like that the house is really moving towards appealing to a younger audience. But I think they have to, you know, you've got to move with the times. And one of my favourite fragrances ever is one of their newer ones. This definitely ties in with that new younger audience that they're aiming for. It's a sweet and fruity floral so if you tend to find traditional florals not quite for you then this could be a good one to try out. It's got sweet raspberry in it and a hint of citrus which I personally can't detect and that's a good thing for me because I don't like citrus fragrances. It's also got almond blossom, jasmine, patchouli, tonka bean and vanilla and it's those tonka bean and vanilla gourmand notes that make it very modern. And of course vanilla is signature to girl out. I really hope that you've enjoyed this first in my series of top fives. If you've enjoyed it then please do give a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!